Good evening and welcome to Culture Bath. The Guy Leshen, Erich Stark, and Shukish Vicky. Please tell us uh, why we're here tonight. What's the occasion? Uh, first, we're very happy we're here tonight. <laughs> uh, we just finished performing this uh, very, what we believe is a very unique uh, creation of ours. Uh, maybe it's best first if we introduce ourselves, and that would make exactly clear. I'm an opera singer, by education, by profession, and these two amazing guys, this fantastic percussionist, and this unbelievable singer and guitarist, uh, are flamenco artists. And we came Didn't here... Did you study opera? Never. I'm still working on it. Okay. <laughs> Eventually he will. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yes. And so how did you all meet? How did we meet? Where, how did it begin? Well, the concept began regardless to our meeting. This was a fantasy of mine to combine these two huge passions of mine, the opera and the flamenco. And this kind of combination has always been around, but usually they would just put the two things on the same stage in proximate time, but never really mixed the two together. There were never opera singers singing flamenco. Never. There was just opera and flamenco on the same stage. Exactly. I mean, of course, you have Monserrat Caballé singing pateneras and things like that, but these are... Um, Those are cl uh, classical uh, material. Yes. Um, the material that belongs to the to the classic music, yes. not to the popular flamenco, traditional flamenco. Not to the flamenco puro, not to the gitano. So, flamenco. how how did you first meet the flamenco specifically? Um, this is actually a very funny story because it starts with how I started to sing opera, and this is when I was a child. How and old? my parents, I must have been four or five years old, mm -hmm. and my parents took me to see Carmen in the Jerusalem festival. We heard one uh, piece of it, one uh, small song from the Habanera, exactly. Mm -hmm. And ever since I've seen this show, which I was totally mesmerized by, um, I wanted to be Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> and I still, until today, I remember myself as a child sitting there and just sensing this art and later when I grew up I said well if I want to be Carmen I have to learn how to sing opera and this is how I started singing opera and of course the first thing I ever sang was Carmen then sadly I became a soprano so nobody lets me sing Carmen anymore uh, and then um, one day I went to see Antonio Gades who was visiting well not him anymore but his group who was visiting Israel a famous uh, flamenco dancer very famous. Uh, and they were doing their own take on Carmen, maybe exactly this kind of flamenco or profusion that already existed, where they had some flamenco puro parts, and which were amazing, and they had some dance to the music from the opera, which for me worked less. And when I came out of the show, I was with my mother, and we called my father, who was not there, and we shared our experiences. And then my father said to me, but Eric, you've seen this show before. I said, no. I mean, of course, I've seen other things by Antonio Gades, but not specifically this one. I said, no, of course you saw it. When you were four years old in the Jerusalem festival. <laughs> so, in the very late age, which I'd rather not say how old I was at that time, uh, I discovered that my whole life was a mistake. And actually, I was singing opera because I wanted to do flamenco. So, that was the kick. So uh, then a few weeks later, I was in Granada studying flamenco dance. And shortly before I went to Granada was the first time we met. I asked Shuki to give me a lesson in flamenco singing. So Shuki, you were already doing flamenco then. How did you start? With yeah, I, I started uh, with flamenco... I started with the guitar when I was like a teenager, about 15 or something like that. I was playing the guitar, looking for music, kinds of, uh, kinds of music to, to interest in. 
and I found flamenco. I found the, I, I discovered the flamenco through one of the teacher I had here in, uh, it was in Jerusalem. Uh, he taught me the basics of flamenco, and then I, it was like, it caught me, the flamenco guitar, this world of flamenco. So I started... It's a very uh, virtuosic <coughs> play, playing with the guitar. Yes, yes, I think that's what caught me in the first place. But then when I, when I got deep into this, this art, I, I, f I found a lot more. Did you speak Spanish at home already? No, no, I, I learned Spanish in the second time I was in Spain. When I, I, the first time I, I went to Spain, it was like a one, for a month take some guitar lessons or st stuff like that. Where and in Spain? In Jerez de la Frontera. And uh, then I, I, when I got back to Israel, I, I started the in interesting in, um, in the singing of flamenco and I started to learn it by myself. And then I, w I went for Spain to, to Spain to study the singing. And then I stayed there like three years um, in Sevilla most most of the time, and I studied the language, the the singing, about everything. Hagai, what about you? When did you? How did you get to flamenco? Um, I I played drums and percussion for all my life, and uh, at one point I guess you, uh, me and Shuki, it it happened in the same uh, point. I heard uh, a CD of flamenco and the singing really caught me and I said I want to go to Spain to learn flamenco. I didn't know what is, I play cajon, it's uh, now flamenco uses this uh, instrument and it's I... It's not the traditional... It came from Peru and in the 70s Paco de Lucia brought it to Spain. And uh, at that point I said I want to go to Spain, I didn't know where, but I just opened the internet where I could study Cajon. And uh, uh, early, um, after a long after time I, I talked to Shuki and uh, we discovered that we, w we, we were in the same place, in the Jerez de la Frontera, the same time. studying flamenco. But you didn't meet. We didn't no, meet. We meet afterwards <laughs> yeah. in Israel. And afterwards we met in Israel and uh, yeah, and this is, uh, we have a long history. Yeah, I together. think in maybe nine years we yeah. started playing together and uh, practice and, uh, flamenco art together. So for nine years you two have been working together and when did you meet uh, Iri? When did Iri join into this... Uh, um, Roman. <laughs> oh, to make it a trio? <laughs> when was that? Well, first um, Shuki and I started working on this project. Okay. Uh, six months ago, I think. Six something like this. Um, we started and now towards this show Haggai joined us and he added a lot of color and energy to this show. There is something very uh, uh, intimate about, uh, about flamenco, even when combined with opera, it's, uh, there is an intense quality. Uh, that, you know, many people probably say the passion, but also passion to the point of tension. Does it uh, affect the way you work together or how, how is this managed? <laughs> I think certain things, this is what we discussed before, that certain things only come to life on the stage. Mm. The because it's very stage. in the moment, it's very... So you can practice the, the structure of, of the song, you can practice... For me, I had to practice a lot the rhythms, I mean, the I'm harmony, still... everything, but yes. there, there's some stuff that, 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 that appears on stage. And in, in flamenco, it, it's very... And that's the duende <laughs> that you were asking life. about before. It comes that's the duende. Your ringtone is not the Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, yes okay. it is. I needed a little bit more. Of it. <laughs> um, okay, for uh, maybe let me just ask. Um, I understand that each of you separately has been to uh, to Spain, but you haven't yet been there together. Together, no. So you don't yet know how this is received. Uh, I think uh, Irit uh, 
tried some. some yes, you I performed with this. As I said, this, this, is a, this is a concept that, that I've been boiling on for a while. Okay. And I actually started working to this direction uh, already a year ago uh, in Rosh Hashanah. And this is funny to also to see how the people in Jerez were doing the, the palmas for the, for the Carmen mm -hmm. <laughs> in the fiesta, at the end of the fiesta. I, I have it recorded. It was probably... How was it? Were they good at the beat? Compared to they, they did okay. <laughs> I, I, th I think the, 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 the common people in Jerez de la Frontera tienen, the, tienen. Yeah. Yeah. They have, they have, uh, they have a, a bit of uh, a quite good uh, yeah. compass. Quite no, it's actually it was fantastic. I, I, it's such a shame I don't have it in a good quality recording because they come in with all this contratiempo and jaleo and stuff and it was amazing. But um, so Especially it was four in the morning and <laughs> we all had a lot to drink, but yes, it was great. <laughs> uh, but also we were practicing, um, I was practicing with a guitarist in Jerez de la Frontera, somebody who's not part of us right now, Tiago, a wonderful guitarist and a, a great teacher for me because of course I had to learn this uh, style as well. And. Um, I remember at some point uh, we did a little recording in uh, La Gitaneria, where, by the way, the owner of the place told me that he was with Antonio Gades in Israel, so probably this was a closing, closing of a circle wow. for me, yeah. because that's probably the person who made me start singing. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but after this we went to another Peña, and, and my friend said, come on, sing, because in Jerez you never know, the people, the person pouring might the be beer, singer, might the be a great singer. singer. <laughs> and he was, I mean, Tiago knew that, this is why he encouraged me to sing to him. And we were sitting around, fooling around, doing some fiesta, he was singing something, I was singing something, and he just loved it. I mean, people were, like we say in Hebrew, they were flying on it, because the, this, the capacity of the voice, combined with the, with the capacity of the letras, of, of those songs, especially for the people who come from the flamenco world, it just brings them to, to another level and they really are fascinated by it. So I, I think the audience in Spain is likely to, to like this. Do you have to plans to go there? What uh, are your plans together? We have dreams. To there? We have dreams of going there. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, thank you very much. In the name of the Culture Buzz and our audience abroad, uh, thank you for a wonderful show tonight. It was a very good concert. I enjoyed it immensely. Right. And uh, thank you for giving us uh, all of your time and telling us a, a bit of the history. Is, is there anything you want to add before we end? Um, I think... We want to say thank you for to Flamenco. Okay. Gracias. Gracias, Gracias Flamenco. Flamenco. Okay, Gracias, Ole. Flamenco. Thank you. Thank you.